Okay, we are back online <laughs> again after being disconnected. Race two, WEC Racing League moving forward. Let's get past all the problems and issues. It was a longer delay than wanted. we wanted, but here we are, and race two is about to begin. We have a two-bucket system, and Drew running pole position with our second bucket is going to launch with an eight-second delay. 16 laps here, and as they go into turn one, let's see how this works out for the drivers. The one driver wide looks like Stixie's a bit wide there. We're gonna ride with Shades in fifth place. And it looks like Shades had a bit of a moment there. Looks, oh, a big pileup, wait, a, quite a pileup there. Back in turn two, I didn't get a chance to see what happened there. But we are going to run back there and see if we can get a look. Looks like Kart Racer is, is he damaged? I don't know. Forza Fun may be caught up in that mess. As, yes, definitely caught up in a mess because the second group of bucket cars has already gotten through. So we weren't able to see what happened there. But looks like Forza Fun and Kart Racer probably had an incident. So, very, very misfortunate there. Wasn't able to see how that went down. As we are on board now with Eagle Eye, and there is a whole mess of cars running down the back banking into the first horseshoe approach on lap one. There's going to be an interesting outcome here because this is a one line only. And how are they going to get through here? As uh, we watch closely, looks like one of the GTs looks like claim some contact there and a bit of more contact from Eagle Eye as he got into the side of flow there. And now we see AXR Starhand, a second group driver, already back in the mixer. So eight second penalty, not probably not hurting those uh, second group too much. So AXR Scarhead now right on the back of Eagle, Eagle Eye. And Keros in the Ferrari on the brakes as Flame and looks like Shades in front of him. Flame dealing with the Ferrari with a bit more grip in front of him. How is he going to approach uh, the International Horseshoe as they come? He's got by him. Now Shades up, up the inside of Keros as they come. To, oh, there's a come together. Shades is completely spun. That is very misfortunate contact, not giving each other a whole lot of room there. I'm sure he is not gonna be happy at all, probably hotter than the helmet as we see Eagle Eye taking out cones, getting very intimate with the cones there, and uh, quickly displacing those cones as now we have Orion right on the back in the Ferrari. Uh, he's gonna look to get a maximum drive here to not suffer a straight line speed loss here to Mr. Eagle Eye, but the speed of the GT really exploiting the Ferrari here. So there's a lot of action to call, not even able to follow it, the, the cars are so spread out. But as we see approaching the bus stop here, is Orion going to get the best drive he can, entrance and exit? No, he's gonna cut the track, that's gonna cost him a penalty there and it looks like he's not going to be able to do anything with Eagle Eye who's leading this race let's go to the front and see where we're at here Dragon F20R Dragon leading this race and now he's being challenged by Veloster 1 I bet Dragon probably has a little bit of downfall as they both go into turn 1 how's this going to work out and we're going to go well we've lost our picture Let's go with the replay cameras to uh, not disturb the picture as much as possible as Dragon does come out on top there. And we're gonna ride with fourth place Cow Molester as these drivers are trying to do everything they can to create distance as the second group. Eastie now the, looks like he might be the first four driver approaching this group. So Eastie hungry to close the gap here and start 
see what he can do with this traffic of Ferraris, which is the first group. So Cal Muster uh, had pretty decent pace, but now is going to come under quick pressure from Easty. Easty's going to be looking to win this race. I, I can tell you right now, he knows this is his opportunity to slot himself into a position to win this race as he is in touch with this first group. Now there's a second group forming, and that group is going to be Flying Papers, Orion, and Z Cadet. As we see Orion already coming down and coming up on the backside of Papers, but it's not going to be an easy pass as they enter the bus stop. And we see an F20R livery there. Oh, Orion getting a little sideways. It's going to compromise his drive. Multiple drivers there. Probably maybe getting a penalty, I don't know, but Flying Papers is going to be, should be able to exploit this, but it looks like Orion has really gotten up to the back side of him here as Tech Q in 11th place within striking distance of this whole group here. As AXR Orion in the pits, not gonna take a chance of being held up by traffic any longer. As we see Scarhan now a in the second bucket, now challenging Zekadet and Flying Papers. You got to be careful through here. Traffic very delicate. If you don't do it right, there can be a spin. We've already seen it once as Scarhan trying to duck up the inside, getting out a little bit on the curtain. And Flying Papers slowed for some reason. I don't know if there was contact there or if he was. What's happening? Have we been disconnected again? It appears that there is a major, yep, disconnected again. broadcast I've been disconnected so I apologize there is going to be nothing to see at this point until I regain connection so hard to say I'm not a tech guru why have I been disconnected so many times I don't know but uh, I apologize for any of that and I'm going to try to reconnect here and see if it's possible I'm hoping that this race did not to get disconnected as well it looks like they are racing so i may be able to get back in here so yeah we're still streaming i was able to get back into the room and now i'm going to see if i can spectate to continue this broadcast Making an attempt now. Looks like we have seven viewers. I, 19 drivers. So I, I assume we've had at least one or two drivers disconnected. I certainly have been. So we're going to get back into the action here and try to recover from this difficult morning of technical difficulties. As we see Forza Fun in 18th place. Uh, he, we know that he had got into maybe an incident early on lap one. Not sure what happened there, but let's go to the front and see what's happening at the front as Veloster 1 is showing in first place, pushing his Ferrari 360 to maximum capacity. I'm certain that he wants to... Oh, look at this. He's in a little hot. <laughs> he gets that thing slide. And now Easty, who I previously said was going to attack has now put himself in a position to run at the front of this race, followed by three Ferrari drivers and AXR Scarhan in fifth. So there's Float following behind him. VMAX is in fourth. None of these drivers have pitted yet, hence the reason why they are at the front. So we do have Easty leading this race. He has not pitted yet. So Vloster 1, who was recently had the lead has been relegated 
to third place and Cal Molester is in second who he has shown very good good pace throughout the series we are keeping our fingers crossed here folks that we do not get disconnected for I think a fifth time this morning so uh, you know we don't want to get too caught up in that but uh, here we are back WEC Racing League round two Ford versus Ferrari the GTs have shown quite some dominance However, we did have a Ferrari win the first race with a driver who had a lap time that was very difficult to match uh, of AXR Orion. But we saw Ford on, I believe, second place. So it was a Ferrari Ford Ferrari for the podium. And now we have a Ford GT at the pointy end of this race in first place as he is starting to stretch that lead. But Cal Molester working everything he can out of that Ferrari to minimize that gap that's being created by Easty. So, as you can see, Veloster 1 now being hounded by another 4 GT. How's this going to work out? We got Scarhan wanting to catch up as quick as possible. He's taking that outside line to try to square off Molester. He knows he's got to maximize his drive here as he does. Fully expect AXR Scarhand to get by Veloster 1 on this straight. As you can see, the straight line speed quite better on the GT, even with the upgrade of the Ferrari. And we saw AXR, is that Orion or Scarhand? Or I'm sorry, AXR might have been Tech Dude, not sure. But uh, Veloster 1 now relegated to fourth place as Scarhand enters turn one in third place so a bit of a break lock up there from somebody not sure who it was let's take a look at Scarhand as he is now putting the pressure on Cowhand as Easty trying to do everything he can to create distance he wants nothing to do with Scarhand but where is AXR TechQ and Orion our other two podium finishers who did suffer a penalty of a second buck it looks like Orion's in ninth place and again, his, you know, unfortunately, nobody was really able to load their, their livery. So quite unfortunate uh, today. So as we see Eagle Eye in 11th place in the GT. So we got Dragon in 10th. It looks like Claim running eighth place at the moment. There's a quite a few drivers right up behind him as we see Claim in his Marlboro livery here being chased down by several drivers a uh, combination of Ferrari Ford drivers and we're going to take a look back here there's been so much drama this morning I really don't even know where to start as now we are riding along with Float riding, driving by himself in 14th, 16th, 16th, four is a fun 17th. Let's see if his progress, and he is now coming up onto the backside of 60. So a lot more action. Let's see, let's take a look at Popcorn here, as he is now running in 15th place. Not a lot of action. I'm going to go ahead and assume that he has got his his pit stop out of the way and that's probably why he's running back there so Keros who was my dark horse for race one running in 13th place followed by Flo and Keros in a really nice looking Ferrari and I'm getting a black screen here I think I'm about to be disconnected again so nope we're still online, so apparently the internet uh, people have not uh, hit the delete button yet. So let's take a look at Claim, who's now in seventh. He's went up one position, and nobody, nobody in front of him to attack, but he is being attacked from the rear from, looks like, Orion. So this will be very interesting. I'm going to follow along with Orion as he prepares his attack on RCC Claim. So we have an AXR Orion now looking to attack the GT of RCC Claim. How is this going to play out? They are going to exit onto the banking now. But Mr. Claim should have the advantage on the 
banking with the higher top speed as we see AXR Eagle Eye with a back or a front row seat to this battle. So let's take a look at how Claim is able to defend if he has to here as Orion is now getting ready to enter this portion of the track where if he gets it right, he's gonna get a nice exit, which what we're gonna do, yeah, looks like he got a very nice exit. So let's ride on board with him. Let's see how this plays out. Playing with a bit of an advantage, as we have said multiple times, straight line speed. But as they enter this turn one, it will be advantage Ferrari as far as grip and ability to get into the corner, make the turn. So let's see how he does here. He's gonna attack for sure through this section as Claim pushing everything to get, oh, look at that. He gets out a little bit wide as Orion is now gonna run up the inside. He's gonna make that stick. Excellent job as the pressure from Orion has caused Claim to go a little bit wide and now Eagle Eye looking to capitalize as well. So Claim not, oh, look at that. Claim getting outside a little bit more which is gonna cause Eagle Eye to maybe be able to strike. I uh, see now an immediate gap being created from AXR Ryan. And now we see Claim look at the car as his GT is a bit unstable coming into the corner entry and even a, on the throttle. Let's see how he does here. And a little bit of, a little bit more stable there, but not able to get on the power, not able to bring anything for Orion. So this looks like this is not going to be to materialize anymore at this point. As now we see a battle between Eagle Eye and Claim. And I've been stuck on these two for some time now, but hard to take my eyes off these two as uh, there's been a bit of a controversy in the past. We don't need to discuss that. Not important. But what is important is how is this GT of Eagle Eye going to attack? What is the strategy gonna be of RRC Claim in front of him as they enter the most, one of the most important parts of the track as we are now on lap 10 of 16. We're over halfway into a 16 lap race here. Looks like Eagle Eye not quite close enough to strike on Claim here as they enter turn one, but I don't know, he might look up the inside. He's holding a nice tight line. Oh, it looks like Claim is a bit outside. It's gonna cause Eagle Eye to be able to get on the gas a little bit sooner. Maybe a strike here going into turn three, the International Horseshoe. He's looking up the inside now as they get on the gas to approach the king. This is a one line through here. Hey, if they go through too wide, it's not gonna look good. It is not gonna turn out well they have relegated positions there so Eagle Eye now look oh there's a bit of contact there these cars are not built for contact they do not like to run offline you really need the full racetrack to get the maximum corner entry and exit speed to maximize your overall lap time so as they enter turn it looks like five here no, I'm sorry turn six running out to the onto the straight I'm gonna stay with this two all the way through the bus stop and see if anything materializes, maybe into turn one if it looks really good. Uh, I am missing out on so much other track action right now. I apologize to the other drivers for that lack of airtime to them, but I want to see if anything materializes here as this battle for, uh, what place are we in here? A uh, battle for eighth place is, uh, heats up. So, one more chance into turn one with uh, Eagle Eye and Orion, um, Eagle Eye and Claim, and we'll see what happens here. So, as they are making their run down across start finish here really soon into turn one, is Eagle Eye going to make a strike here? He is within striking distance, one car length as we see Veloster One exiting the pits, and he's looking the outside where screen went black on us. We have no picture. Uh, yep, and Eagle Eye not able to do anything with Claim. So we are going to take a look at the rest of the field. Zekadet in 14th place as he is running by himself. 
Forza Fun in 15th. So Float in 13th. Nothing there to report. Not probably happy with his current position as Keros in 11th. And Dragon doing a great job in top 10. So top 10 for Dragon. He was at the pointy pointy part of the field in the beginning has fallen back some a bit here as we see Easty still leading this thing. Scarhand in second with Cal Molester doing a great job in third at the only Ferrari in the top three. And he is being pursued by AXR Tech Q, another Ferrari. So is Scarhand able to do anything with Easty? Where is Easty in relation to Mr. Scarhand? It looks like he has gapped him by about two and a half seconds. So, with about five laps to go, is Scarhand going to be able to do anything with EC? I don't know. It's a lot of time to cover. A mistake is going to have to be made for EC to really surrender this, I think. So, being that there's no immediate threats here, we're going to take another look at Tech Q and see what is the distance. Oh, Tech Q in the pits? Okay, I believe, yeah, Tech Q in the pit. So it looks to me like he is in the pits and he is going to now exit. Flying Papers is also in the pits. And Karos, who has taken a pit, is going to come down into turn one. He should gain a couple positions here as he pushes a tire out of the way and he is looking to attack i'm not seeing any immediate battles on track right now let's check back with claim and eagle eye and see if that has changed it's eagle eye still has not been able to run down claim so they are about the same position as they were but it looks like mr orion has not shut the door so he has not ran off with this thing so this is still a battle Anything can happen. So now VMEX in 14th, F4R VMEX. Let's take a look at his 11th place position. Did not have a great qualifying today. Currently running by himself in 11th as we see Float in 13th. And we only have 16 drivers here, folks. So is it lag outs maybe a rage quit hard to say not really sure unfortunately to have 16 drivers on our second race here but uh that's where we are at at the moment so we see float chasing down the 12th place driver as flying papers locks at the brake it's going to cause float to get a bit of a drive on him here Float's probably going to be able to get a little bit exit more exit speed there as we now have seven viewers want to welcome all seven viewers and apologize again for multiple disconnects today. Frustrations on that for sure. But uh, we have not been able to call a lot of really close battles. It's been spread out so much. But let's watch ETR float as he runs down into turn one on flying papers. He's within striking distance as they come down. Tricky section. It's, it's a couple lines you can get through here. But if you don't get it right, you will lose traction. Float running around the outside. Is he going to make it stick on the gas? He has done so. And, oh, but Float now off. No, he's not off circuit. Able to run up the inside. Hold that. As Flying Papers cannot do anything to strike back and relegates that position. Now runs 13th with Float in 12th. And 11th place, quite a bit ahead. I don't see anything happening there for the rest of the race unless there's a mistake or maybe a pit that we are not taking into consideration. So, Popcorn, who we have talked about a lot as a driver, is not in the field. So, I do not know what's happened to him. Sorry to see him not in the race at the moment. Popcorn, what happened to you? Let's take a look at Scarhand. As Scarhand is in fifth place, We now have eight viewers. Welcome our eighth viewer. Scarhand staring down about a second and a half behind Eagle Eye. Again, these drivers have not pitted. 
They probably are gonna pit here in the next lap, I would say, it's lap 14. They have to pit by the 15th lap, so we will see what the pit strategy is here. We have not yet taken a ride along with our leader, so let's do that now, as Easty has earned the right to gain a ride along, as he is now running into, it looks like turns, I believe this is turn six, no, turn five, running up to turn six now, as he is coming on to turn six, staring down the last corner prior to entering the banking, hard on the gas there. He is probably gonna be pitting, I imagine, this lap, but we're gonna follow with him in the meantime, as he is full gas running along the banking, heading into the next corner, which would be the bus stop, the dip, most difficult corner on this circuit. We're gonna look for the Daytona sign on the right-hand side written on the wall that you see where they start braking, and indeed it is. Part of the brakes drops one or two gears, maintains a ma uh, consistent throttle through there. Very careful not to get a penalty. Does good, back on the gas as he heads out of the bus stop onto the final turn 12, the fastest portion of the track. But is he gonna dip into the pits is the question. Or is he gonna wait one more lap? I think he's probably gonna go into the pits now. But looks to me like he's gonna, nope, nope, he's going to the pits and he's in. So where's he gonna come out? That will be interesting to see. In the meantime, we are going to run with Claim and see if he is still fighting with Eagle Eye, which he, are, which he is. Is either one of them gonna drop him? It's with Scarhan right behind and Molester doing a great job at six as the first Ferrari at the moment. So, it looks to me like neither one of those drivers has ducked into the pits and they have stayed out. So they are, I don't think they pitted yet. So this will be interesting. Hard to say the distance between they have with some of the other drivers. I'm. I'm assuming they haven't pitted, but that would be a lot of fun if they haven't because that would put this group, which is very close together. Oh, look at this. And it looks like Claim gets really sideways off the, off the line there. He's going to lose his spot to Eagle Eye. Drastic measures on the second to last lap. And this, I'm staying right here, folks. Claim is not going to be happy with the self-induced mistake, which has... Uh, surrendered a position there to Eagle Eye. Now Scarhand salivating, waiting for the opportunity to strike with Easty about a second, two seconds up the road. Really gives him some breathing room. Now Eagle Eye going to see if he can hold his position with the pressure of being just ahead here. I expect a hit from all these drivers. It, I'm curious. If Lost two viewers, I completely understand. Uh, that situation so we are going to try to get back in here if nothing else to get a finished position And we are still broadcasting. Haven't lost that. Not able to do, oh, looks like we are now being put back into the viewer uh, capabilities. If nothing else, maybe I can get the race stats and whatnot, so. So again, we are going to run at the front of this with Orion running first place. I think he's already just crossed the finish line, so that's probably a race win for him. And it looks to me like it's gonna be Orion, Eastie, and Eagle Eye as our top three. So that is a Ferrari, 
Ford and Ford. So Claim not able to recover and Scarhan just behind him. So we're going to uh, stay here and see if we can get a, look at that, Kyle Molester six, great job. Tech Q seventh. We'll have to find out what happened to him. And uh, Veloster won eighth and Forza Fun ninth. So I am going to try to get a 60 10th, Karos 11th with Dragon 12th. I'm going to try to get a screenshot of our final here as we get loaded back in. There is a massive monsoon, I'm going to call it, outside my door, which may have contributed to the issue we have here with uh, with the internet. I don't know, but it should.